the artists work and you know you understand you see things in process you see their progress you see how an idea gets shaped I think biennials are interesting for that reason to see a lot of site specific projects made you know with that context in mind No? So What's, how does it feel? It's great. It's yeah. really, really great. It started two years ago in the previous Binali. The curators mm -hmm. made these conferences mm -hmm. and so we took all the, the recordings for these conferences and we made a tra transcription mm -hmm. in English and then we translated everything into Urdu. The, the mission was to make a song out of this text. A song that they choose it to, to give this whole authority to the workers inside the Minali. We found that most of them are coming from Pakistan. They're not really professionals, but they just like to sing. And with a lot of rehearsals with them, I think it became one wonderful teamwork. It just sank in. Yes. It, you know, the lyrics were just in perfect sync to oh. the spirit of, of the Kowali. Like, it didn't feel like it was a, that they were singing somebody else's song. The workers that, that contributed, yes. they have other jobs. This is like a, to get the opportunity to be creative, yeah. I think is also very powerful. I ended up showing a range of works in the biennial. The animation and the drawings, the projections inside this abandoned cinema and the performance. But what pulls all the work together is really just the simple act of drawing. Talking with other artists is an incredible process. You engage with the work very differently. You also learn about their personality and different relationships between different works start to emerge. To tap into that energy, to tap into that moment is great for me as an exercise. Most cities are not pedestrian friendly. Right. You really like always have to wait. Right. Like here, crossing, just walking over to the foundation right. took so much longer because there's so much traffic and nobody stops. <laughs> this place is so hot to begin with. Like, this is the winter. <laughs> I love this little driving area because I think you see the mosque, it's very beautiful. That you don't expect it and then you right. turn and it's right there. It's really quite beautiful. I love these mosques. The simplicity of the architecture of it. You know, when you have just the dome, and the legs and another structure around. Because the dome I have done many times, but not with this circuit around it. So the ice here. Ice dropping. 
Bye. You have to show the eye because if you don't yeah. see it, it's going to go. It's yeah, a they temporary. Are, people are busy. So when is the next eye coming? Um, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Oh, so. Yeah, okay. once ice a day. Every day we have to eat something. I wanted to have this thing that every day somebody gotta give a piece of life to that. So every day somebody gotta put on ice. And that is the labor of someone to put it there. You know, we have to feed the piece. Technically, it's the life who would feed the, the pound and the pound would feed the grass, you know. You have this who is connected to that, who is connected to that, who is connected to that, who is connected to the net, who is connected to the, to the weight of the stones, who is connected over there. Everything's like that, like you and me. Where are you coming from? Pakistan. I am Brazilian, you are Pakistani. But Brazil and Pakistan are different. Oh yeah, in the end, it's just a singularity of a person. When I got here, I found this house appealing because there's an inversion here. It's just, it's not a house with a courtyard. It's a courtyard with a small house. In that I found, I found pretty attractive because I could have the main piece here and then the, the house has just... This is, this is the Let's outside. come inside, I'll show you. They have, yeah, they have this very intelligent um, architectural element here that I haven't seen uh, anywhere else. That is a, a kind of slit that they do in the wall. And they have this, these um, spaces, like niches. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you call it in English. For the light. For the light to come in. So it's Air all natural it. light. But I wanted to use it to have like, more or less like the palette I've used here. It's at 9.30, it's on the, on the white wall. And it's all like this, it's really messy. There's a moment when they are pretty straight. And then they are just like praying carpets. <laughs> yeah. They are like, actually. I hadn't planned, but I had planned that the size of each would be the size of one person. It has so size. many multiple associations yeah. now. The prayer mat is really quite beautiful now that you brought it, it up. It's open. The significance of the day, the time of the day related to the call of prayer, mm -hmm. that time becomes very much the yeah, connecting it's all, it's all time -based, time -based thread here. The call of prayer is too much of a cliche. If there's a film or anything about the, it's going to be there. But sitting here and experiencing the space and it just happens spontaneously, it's a very beautiful and layered experience. When I hear, I, I remember how much I miss it. I saw quite a lot of kids using this space really? in the evening, like around 10. Yes. There was lots of kids. There was no traffic and, you know, it was very cool. So it seemed like families were kind of converging here. The people who walk here, from my conversation, a lot of cab drivers, market people, like nobody really gets free time to sort of sit. Maybe uh -huh. have that extra moment. So you go in here, and uh, mm -hmm. and then you. Uh, this is the door. Huh? This is the door, and then you can oh, open nice. it. Go <laughs> in. And from actually, ah, I'm sorry, I have to oh, ask you to take sorry. your shoes oh, off. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yes. <laughs> So there's an infinity space here inside. It only sucks out the humidity, but not the hot air. Oh, right now so it's nice. still too hot, I think. There has to be a C system inside, as it's very hot. And if I imagine nobody being here, yes. and maybe the air conditioner is in operation, yeah, yeah. I would not want to leave this space. So how are you going <laughs> to manage?
the crowd. All of this here inside and outside it's called Al Haram Al Sharif. Al Haram is the safe court, the safe zone. The safe zone. Yeah, the safe zone. It's from the photograph you can see everything. How much shift has happened? Are some of the buildings already? All of this here in the, for, uh, in the front of photo is building up so you cannot see Kaaba anymore. This has people coming with a similarity in everything. They wear white, everyone's similar, no difference between the rich and the poor, everything is the same. This is the meaning. And when you see the whole photograph, you can, everything is not, not related. So the so safe zone being it, negotiated yeah, by, by money. Yeah, yes. Capitalism sometimes wins, and this is what we hate, really, clearly. I was always a little bit pushed back by the almost systematic uh, categorization of the African continent as a place for misery, conflict, drought and uh, poverty. Sharjah has a lot to do with uh, the oil industry, of course, and they have a lot of uh, Africans obviously working uh, for the oil industry here. This piece, which has a very long title, um, it goes something like that. It's the oil workers of the Shell Company of Nigeria uh, returning home from work caught in torrential rain. So when I came upon this picture, which was actually about water and about rain, it felt like uh, the real uh, appropriate opening to making a portrait of, uh, of, of Nigerians in my own way. Like there's this transient yeah. Um, space with a lot of different people from the region yeah. that are here for a short period of time and all along, or, but it, there is that sort of chaotic uh, conflation of language and culture. That's the beauty of it. Yeah. Abdullah, can you just speak something, please? Sure, well, yeah. I was very interested in sort of this um, layers of language that, that are in operation in just the pedestrian experience of, of this location. And I thought that here the Arabic would be understood by the locals. My work really deals with layering and here Dion was physically going to layer herself, her sound. We were aware that we wanted multiple voices that would be connected directly to the section with the singing spheres and each would represent the individuality and the recitation and the delivery of each poet. The audience who came to view the biennial, the majority of them came from the outside. These last few days that we've been here, what I've understood more is that this idea of the outsider is very prevalent in Sharjah, in its construction as a community. These notions are really embraced in the performance piece. 